Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. I know it's been a while, I kind of took the summer off again, uh, but I'm back now and it's time to get back to it. And I have a new product for you here and I want to do a little unboxing and review for you. Uh, we're going to start this video with an unboxing. What it is, is the Bauer, um, what's the actual real name for this? 8 inch stationary buffer. Uh, this is a corded piece of equipment with a 3 quarter horsepower 3590 RPM motor and extended arms. Um, I got a lot of hand planes to restore. Uh, I'm going to put some green rouge on one of these, I think, uh, one of these wheels, and I think it's going to help me with stropping blades. Uh, you know, and possibly the green rouge can do wood as well. Uh, but this is mostly going to be for metal for me. And uh, I'm going to be honest, Harbor, you know, Bauer is a Harbor Freight brand, and they, this, I went in the store not thinking I was going to buy this. They had their central machinery, whatever it is, um, third of a horsepower machine on sale for $74. 70, you know, 70, $69.99, 70 bucks, $75 is what it was. And um, this was a hundred and uh, 35 I think and I'm like well that's $65 more but uh, two weeks ago Harbor Freight had their 25% off coupon no exclusions and you know when you take uh, uh, the the difference off instead of 75 bucks for the uh, uh, central machinery one I got this Bauer for a hundred bucks uh, I figured now I could have gotten 25% off of the central machinery one too, so it would have been a little cheaper. But I figured getting this right, it was $101 out the door, was a pretty good deal. Um, you know, keep an eye on the Harbor Freight uh, coupons, they still exist. All right, let's unbox this thing. Here, you got your instruction manual. Always good to read the darn instruction manuals, guys. I know we. We pitch these a lot, but they are worthwhile sometimes. You get two, uh, two cloth uh, wheels, and I already see a problem. I have two of the same exact wheel in here. This was supposed to be a fine and a coarse or medium. Um, these are like two or three dollars, so I'm not really going to worry about it, but it would have been nice if I had the two different ones coming with it, but I mean, now I got an extra one of these and I'll go pick up the other one. Um, I have the bushings in here. We'll use these in a minute. Um, here we go. Styrofoam. Um, you know what? This is pretty well packed. The whole thing is in styrofoam. Let me tilt this where you can see it. It's actually molded in styrofoam in here. So they did a good job packing it. Pretty happy with that. It's always a struggle getting these things out of that packed styrofoam though. And there it is. And that's all that's in the box. So there's your unboxing. We do have quite a bit of plastics here to deal with. And it has the smell of uh, the grease that they put on these um, to keep them from rusting on the uh, long shipping overseas because we all know these come from, you know, China, I'm sure. And uh, they sat on a uh, container ship and the container ship, you know, is in salt water for, what is that, the better part of uh, two weeks to get over here. So they put, it looks like on the two shafts, they put a good old helping of that, what do they call that stuff, Cosmoline or something? Nasty smelly stuff and it's sticky. So. Here's the product, completely unboxed and unwrapped. And what you get is obviously a corded tool. I'll give you this view. It says Bauer, nice red. 
you got the uh, flanges here and obviously one of these uh, twists backwards and one of them twists normally because they're going to spin and they're going in different directions and you have the two bushings here to go inside to put on these two things but I'm going to stop the camera now I'm going to go get some mineral spirits get this goopy stuff these two shafts are covered in oil type substance I want to get that cleaned up and then we'll come back to putting the buffers on and testing it out okay guys I am back uh, mineral spirits took all of the green and greasy stuff off of these shafts I cleaned the flanges up and the bolts this is a very easy assembly guys it's it's Take your flange, put it on, take a buffer. And, and I looked at the instructions, I did read these instructions, and I was wrong. It comes with two of the same for this, uh, the, the, the central machinery one, the third horsepower one I was looking at is the one that had the two different kinds of buffers. So this comes with two of the same wheel, put different uh, compounds on them, I guess is what they're thinking. Nowhere does it mention these bushings in the uh, manual that I could find, but obviously these are for if you're using a buffer with a different diameter hole in it, you use these to put that on. For these two, I don't need it. So you put one of these collars on, run your, your, your pad on, put the other uh, collet on, and then depending on which side you're doing, one of these is right threaded, one of these is left threaded. Okay guys, I had a little trouble getting this nut on because one of them is regular and one of them is left threaded. And if you remember, I had this turned around this way when we started this video so you could read the bower. And I spun it 180 degrees and what screwed me up, and you probably won't make this mistake because you're not filming and you're not going to spin it, but I had the wrong nuts on the wrong side, and I was trying to get the left, left nut on the right-hand side. So, solve that problem. So, in a nutshell, all you do is take the flange, put it on, slide your felt on, put the other flange on, and then if you have the proper nut, it goes right on. Isn't that nice? Thank you very much. Same with this side. You got a flange. You got a buffing wheel. You got another flange, and you got a backwards nut. So this one goes counterclockwise. Okay, now on both sides, right up here next to the buffer, there are flat spots ground so that you can get a wrench on this. And I don't know what size it is, and I'm just going to take out a pair of channel locks uh, and another pair of something that looks like channel locks and we'll put this one in the slot to hold it. So you see I had a flat spot on each side to hold it and then just snug it up. Same on this side. We'll just snug it up. Piece of cake. Now, the manual very clearly states, bolt this to a working surface, which this is going to end up in my basement. It's not going to end up upstairs, but I'm going to plug it in up here and I'm going to very carefully turn it on on this bench uh, without uh, bolting it down. Uh, obviously, the manual clearly states, bolt yours down before you turn it on. So I am breaking the rules here, but you know, it is what it is. This isn't where this thing's going to live. And I want to do this video for you. So make sure that no cables near spinning. Plug it in. Now this switch, you should be able to see here, is one of the switches with the uh, remove to lock features. It's got this little plastic thing. That, it's a safety feature. Um, you know, you got to put it in to use it. Um, I don't have kids. I don't really have a concern for that. But if you do, obviously, pay attention. Uh, it's a safety feature. All right, I'm going to give this a good hold and fire it up. Now, firing a motor up for the first time, putting my hand on here probably isn't the smartest idea. Just in case there's something loose in there and it goes kaboom. But 
I'm going to trust Bauer did this right. So let's fire it up. And it's not going anywhere. It's running nice and smooth. It's not that loud. You probably can hear me talking over it. Um, let me shut it down. It actually runs very fine. Takes a little time to spin down. Okay, a little bit more on the uh, buffer. It's the next day. It's been throwing string everywhere, so I did a little research on the old YouTube channel and found that taking a little sandpaper to a new uh, cloth buffing wheel will get rid of all that stringy stuff, so I'm going to try it. I haven't tried it yet. You're going to see it here while I see it, so let's see what it does. Okay, we're still getting a lot of string action here. Um, you know, I don't know if this is the best buffing wheel that came with this thing stock, but you know, you can see how much came down here from the sandpaper. So I'm gonna guess it's better now, uh, and I think over time it will wear the loose string away. Um, the sandpaper thing did seem to work a little bit. Um, we'll try it. Uh, the other thing, I only have the green rouge that I use on my strop. Uh, I again misread the box because I was originally shopping for the uh, Central Machinery uh, model or whatever Harbor Freight model it was and that one came with three different uh, rouges so I didn't buy any of the buffing compound while I was at Harbor Freight. So all I have is the green which you know is the kind of the standard uh, compound that, that we use, uh, woodworkers use on metal anyway. Now if you're really a person who does a lot of metal you go through a whole grit of different uh, buffing compounds but for me uh, this is going to be more my plain uh, parts you know backs of chisels uh, old rusty tools that I buy that I clean up uh, you know I like to go to flea markets and buy old tools so this will help me in cleaning those up uh, I will probably uh, I know I think I have some uh, Tripoli or uh, Carnuba wax that I'll, I'll put something on this other uh, buffer and bring it downstairs, but I'm pretty happy with it uh, I'm gonna tell you right now one thing. I'm not happy with is this screw here vibrated out and <laughs> Here's the nut so um, Don't really know how to word that other than I'll check the other ones, but uh that's pretty interesting. Um, something to uh, kind of be aware of, um, Harbor Freight. Um, well, that's interesting. Did you guys see that? Let me flip this around. This screw, one of four that hold the motor in, completely vibrated loose and is coming right out. Um, I hope you can see that right here. Um, not a big deal. I caught it and found it in time and I caught the bolt. But I will test the other three. Um, you know, these things vibrate and spin at a very high rate of speed, so it's possible that something can rotate loose. So checking all four bolts isn't the biggest thing in the world. Hey everybody, it's another day in the future. I, I omitted a few things in this video because uh, I had some problems with the rouge. So I wanted to explain a few of the things because I popped a lot of notes up there in the editing and I know we don't like to read those notes. Uh, what happened was I put some green rouge on this wheel and just started using it and it started sending string, I mean all over the place. And I, I, I googled. I, I googled uh, buffing wheels and found that taking sandpaper to the new wheel uh, while it's running will uh, clean up that string. So that's what I did. And then I showed you doing the uh, back of this chisel very quickly, but I never actually showed you that it did kind of shine it up a little bit in that one little area. Now I'm gonna be very honest with you. Chisels and these things, I don't know that I'm gonna be doing that. 
I, I did say I want to do some planes, and here's a plane I just picked up. This is a this is an interesting little guy. This is a I think it's a uni Union plane. Nice plane. Um, I'm going to be restoring a bunch of planes, and a lot of the parts, even the small parts, the nuts, the bolts, the the the, the pieces, all of that, I'm going to work on with this tool. That's why I purchased the tool. I don't know that I want to be using chisels with this. This is something that spins in this direction and it can grab things and throw them at you. And it could be a little dangerous. Uh, I'm going to show you a video at the end of this, a little clip at the end of this that happened with this sandpaper just to show you what could happen. But before that, let me show you a little bit more of it in action. I have a plane here. This is really my use case. Let me take this guy apart. Now this is a probably a poor example because this is, and I've started already, you can see that it's a little shiny on the front of this. Uh, this is gun metal. Um, this is not, hey, let's not do this. Let's try, uh, let's try this. While I'm doing this, I can tell you I did take this wheel off and, and tested the other three uh, screws for the bolt that was loose. The other three were nice and tight. I tightened the other one up. I'm going to go with uh, something that vibrates this hard. A bolt could loosen. It could have loosened in travel. Who knows? Now the blade I'm not going to put to this yet, but this little, uh, see the shiny bit here? Let's see if we can buff this up a little bit. All right. Chip breaker. Let's see what it can do. light is showing you that there's a much nicer shine on this now. Notice I stayed way down low on the buffing wheel. Um, I'm going to show you a clip of what happened to me with this luckily just a piece of foam sanding block but this is a great lesson for all of you on how dangerous these things can be. So thanks for watching everybody have a great day. Uh, if you like this please hit the like and subscribe button and check this out. This is a great safety clip for you. It's only about five seconds and here it comes right now.